Okay, on February 14th here, I'm excited to do a read aloud for the book uh, Valentine. By This is by The Voice of the Martyrs, and it's from the Courageous book series. So there's six books in total. Uh, highlight different uh, martyrs or people who are persecuted in the faith. And so I'm going to get into reading this one for people. Understand the background of where Valentine's Day originates from. All right. So, this book is for our Christian brothers and sisters around the world today who, like Valentinus, know obeying God is worth the risk. So, on February 14th, we celebrate Valentine's Day by giving our friends notes and candy hearts with messages like, be my Valentine, and will you be mine? But Valentine's Day is much more than hugs, hearts, cards, and kisses. It all began with a man named Valentinus, who loved Jesus very much. Valentinus was born more than 200 years after Jesus' birth in a land called the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire was so big, it stretched all the way across Europe in parts of East and North Africa. It was also very powerful, conquering any tribe that dared to invade its territory. Rome was ruled by a harsh emperor named Claudius, who was so mean, some called him Claudius the Cruel. Claudius was a tall man and had eyes of fire. Many said he was so strong he could knock the teeth out of a man or an animal with just one punch. Claudius was also very skilled in battle and conquered the tribes that tried to invade the Roman Empire. But more and more tribes were becoming a threat. We need more soldiers to defeat the barbaric invaders, complained Claudius. So he began his search for strong young men to fight with him. Posters were soon hung in cities and villages announcing the emperor's call for soldiers. Fight for Rome against the barbaric tribes that threaten our empire, they said. But few men responded to the emperor's call for soldiers. They knew they would have to leave behind their loved ones, their wives, mothers, fathers, children, or the women they had promised to marry, and wouldn't see them for at least 25 years. Claudius became very angry that few men wanted to become soldiers, so he decided to create a new law. There will be no weddings in Rome, declared Claudius the Cruel. The people of Rome could not believe what they had just heard. No weddings? They cautiously whispered in their homes and on the streets. How could the emperor do such a thing? Young men and women engaged to be married were heartbroken. Now, what do we do? They cried. There was a church leader who was also surprised and saddened by the emperor's new rule. His name was Valentinus. Valentinus was very troubled. Marriage was God's idea, and no emperor can hinder what God created. If we choose to marry couples secretly, we could go to prison, said Valentinus to Marius, who served with him in the church. The people of Rome already knew Valentinus and Marius would not worship the Roman gods. This could get us into more trouble, they agreed. But they decided obeying God was worth the risk. So deep in the woods, under the cover of midnight's darkness, couples would meet Valentinus to be joined in marriage. But... It wasn't long before news of Valentinus' secret wedding ceremonies reached the ear of Emperor Claudius. Arrest the traitor Valentinus at once, he ordered his guards, who found Valentinus and dragged him before the emperor. Valentinus' ankles and wrists were put in chains as he stood before Emperor Claudius and members of the court. 
The emperor looked fiercely at this man who disobeyed his law and said, What is this I have heard of you, Valentinus? Why will you not live in peace by obeying my laws, worshipping the Roman gods, and turning your back on your god? Valentinus looked up at the emperor and said, For all to hear, if you knew about the grace of God, you wouldn't have asked me to deny him and worship your idols. Claudius was stunned. How dare you challenge me, he shouted. As he sat on his throne, the emperor glared at the defiant priest standing before him and asked him another question. Is Jesus God's son? Valentinus smiled, and with his face glowing with joy, he answered, Yes, Jesus is God's son, and if you believe in him, your soul will be saved. Claudius sat on his throne and thought very hard about what Valentinus had just said. Suddenly, Claudius stood up and exclaimed, This man's words... Makes sense. What is wrong with asking Jesus to save our souls? The chief prison guard named Marcus stood up and said, Emperor, you're being misled by the words of this criminal. Why should we turn our backs on worshipping the Roman gods when this is what we've been taught since we were children? Claudius changed his mind and cried, Take this criminal away. He is to be put to death for breaking my laws. Marcus grabbed Valentinus by the arm and led him to his prison cell. Marcus took the rusty iron key from his belt and turned the lock on the cell door, throwing Valentinus onto the cold, hard dirt floor. But Valentinus knew he was not defeated. He had just told the emperor Claudius the Cruel about Jesus Christ. Even the court officials heard. He rejected Jesus' free gift of salvation. Valentinus sadly thought, but maybe someday he'll accept it. One day while Marcus was standing guard, Valentinus began to pray, Lord Jesus, you are light. Fill this prison with your light in such a way that those who are here will know you are God. When Marcus heard his prayer, he turned toward Valentinus and said, You say God is light? My daughter has been blind since birth. If your God can make her see, then I will believe in your God. So Valentinus prayed God would cause his daughter's blind eyes to see. The next morning, Valentinus was awakened by the sound of feet hitting the hard earth. As soon as he sat up on his straw mat, he saw Marcus grabbing the bars of his cell and shaking them. She can see, Marcus exclaimed. My daughter can see. And he and his entire family decided to believe in Jesus. But not long after Marcus's daughter was healed of blindness, Valentinus faced his punishment he was put to death for marrying couples against the emperor's law and refusing to worship the Roman gods. This happened on February 14th, the day the Romans celebrate the goddess Juno and the eve of the feast of Lupercalia in the year 269. And whatever happened to Emperor Claudius... Did his law-forbidding marriages help him find more soldiers to fight for the Roman Empire? Months after Valentinus stood before the emperor, Claudius and his soldiers were in a series of battles. As he and his soldiers were preparing to fight against a barbaric people called the Vandals, he became very sick and died in January of the year 270. No one knows if he ever accepted Jesus' free gift of salvation. Almost 200 years after Valentinus died, a leader in the church declared February 14th to be the day of Christians honor and remember the courageous life of Valentinus. This replaced the Roman holiday that celebrated the goddess Juno 
and the eve of the Feast of Lupercalia. There are countries today where Christians cannot legally gather together and worship. If they're caught having a Bible study, prayer meeting, or baptism outside the buildings where the government allows them to meet, they're often arrested. Like Valentinus, these Christians use this opportunity to share the gospel with the police who have arrested them. In Vietnam, a woman named Vu, pronounced Vu, was arrested for attending a prayer meeting in the mountains. When the police questioned her, she told them how Jesus died on the cross so they could be forgiven. Suddenly, four more police who had been listening from a nearby room entered. One of them asked, If we want to believe in God, is it possible? She said, Yes, any time. Vu was arrested many more times. Each time, a different policeman was sent to question her because officials were afraid she would convince them to trust in Jesus. Now, you know why Valentine's Day is more than chocolates, cards, and candy hearts. It's a day we can remember Valentinus and celebrate his courage to tell the emperor about Jesus, marry couples in secret, and love no other god but God alone. So, honoring the life of Valentinus, St. Valentinus today. And uh, there's a verse in Hebrews that says, Marriage should be honored by all. So, a man of God that stood in faith, in the face of persecution. Praise God. In Jesus' name, read this book to your children and your children's children. All right, be blessed in Jesus' name.